You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Don? Hmm? How fast are we going? Oh, 60, 65. Steady as she goes. Are you sure the speedometer's working? I think so. Why? It's just that those hills over there, they haven't moved all morning. Um, hills don't move. You know that, honey. But we've been driving for hours. Shouldn't we be a little bit closer? This is the wide open spaces. Objects are not closer than they appear. You can say that again. What you have here, ma'am, is the great American Southwest. Desert to the right of us, desert to the left. Amber waves of cactus and all that. Where are we, anyway? Well, if it's Tuesday, this must be New Mexico. Where's the map? I got it. Mm, you're wrong. <laughs> Me? I'm never wrong. First time for everything. Actually, it's Arizona. You're kidding. Nope. Nope? Yep. Could have fooled me. There should be a town pretty soon. I'll watch the signs. You need a rest stop? Oh, it might be nice to stretch our legs. Get some lunch, don't you think? I think that's a capital idea, Mrs. Carter. Mm, say that again. What? Mrs. Carter. I like the way it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. How long has it been? Let me see. 238 hours and 17 minutes. Wow, you're good. You're right, I am. Don't forget it. <laughs> Not much chance of that. You want a soda? There should be some in the back. All gone. I already checked. Then we better hope for a town. We could use some gas, too. Don, look out. What does he want? Gosh, I don't know. To go around us? Well, let him. Don't worry. I'm not going to duel with him. Look at that. His license plate. Three sevens. Don, listen. What's wrong with the car? I don't know. We still got a quarter tank. Of... Oh. Oh, great. There will be a tow truck any time now. You'll see. How do you know? Three sevens. You don't really believe that. Watch. Hi there, folks. Need a tow? As a matter of fact, we do. Well, come on then, hop in the front seat. Gas station's about 20 miles. They got a mechanic? Oh, sure do. Fix it right up. What did I tell you? Huh? Let's go, honey. You are so lucky, Dawn. <laughs> well, luck had nothing to do with it. Don and Pat Carter, honeymooning couple on their way back to New York. They've had the time of their lives, and they'll be home in a few days. Or that was the plan. But their new life together is full of surprises. Very shortly, Mr. and Mrs. Carter will be subjected to a gift of sorts, one that most humans never receive in a lifetime. They will be given a glimpse into the future. The price of that glimpse? A mere penny, one hundredth of a dollar. The time is now. The place of their revelation is a little diner in Ridgeville, Arizona. But what our honeymooners don't realize yet is that this unassuming town just happens to lie on the outskirts of the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Nick of Time, starring Marshall Allman and Jamie Brown, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. How 
how long is he gonna take? Relax, honey. He just put it up on the rack. How can I relax in this heat? You could fry an egg on the sidewalk. Well, that's not a bad idea. I'm getting pretty hungry. I'd settle for a cold drink. There's a water fountain at the side of the station. Fine, I hope it works. Go ahead. I'll talk to him and see what's going on. You do that. Don, all I want to do is go home. Me too, baby. There's a lot of miles between here and Manhattan. And you have to be back at work next week, remember? How could I forget? There's a promotion hanging on the balance. Look, I'll see what's up. Then we'll have some lunch, okay? Okay. I don't mean to complain. Good luck. Hang in there a little while longer. We'll make it. I know we will. I'm just impatient to get on with our life. Me too. Oh, hi, Mr. Carter. Hi there. How's it coming? Oh, she's coming. You got yourself a bad fuel pump is all. That right. Well, can you fix it? Sure. I can fix it. Be a while, though. Oh. Why is that? Won't take but an hour to put it on. But I gotta order one from Klingman. How long is that gonna take? Well, if I send the truck over now, hour, hour and a quarter each way. Ah. Oh. You know, my wife would like to get going as soon as possible. I'll bet she would. Can't keep every part in stock, though. Don't see cars like this all the time. Can you get right on it? I'd appreciate it. We can't wait around all day. Oh, I'll get it done for long. Don't worry. Why don't you and the missus take it easy? Have some chow. Where would you suggest? Diner's right down the street. Best in town. Ask the truckers, they'll tell you. Thanks, I'll, uh, I'll do that. We'll be, we'll be at the diner then. Let us know when you're finished. Sure thing. There you are. How are you holding up? The drinking water isn't cold. I'm sorry, baby. Well? Fuel pump's shot. But it's a new car. That's what he said. He'll get right on it. How long? A couple more hours. What? Yeah, maybe three. That's crazy. Four tops. Are you kidding? That's the max he promised. How come? What's the problem? He has to send the truck to the next town for a part. And where is that? I don't know. New Mexico? Colorado? Someplace like that. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's take a walk. Ready for some lunch? Lunch? We might as well just move here, put down some roots. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll rent a room at a motel. Get the weekly rate. <laughs> yeah, well, is it air conditioned? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking an electric fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna look for a job tomorrow. <laughs> Where? I don't know, but I'm holding out for an executive position. <laughs> well, maybe there's an Indian reservation. We can move into a teepee. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, you. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Where's Restaurant Row? Just ahead. You can see the diner from here. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of jobs, you think I should phone the office again? Easy, lover. You're going to lose that promotion if you keep pestering them. I'm probably gonna lose it anyways. Oh, that's a fine attitude. I thought I married a man on the way up. Who's the best man for the position? Me. There you are then. Thompson has seniority. Mm, doesn't mean a thing. Take it from me. Little Mary Sunshine, huh? That's my name. Whoops. What's wrong? Don't step on the cracks in the sidewalk. Why? Or I'll break my mother's back. I'm only trying to save her life. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Here we are, the best coffee shop in town. The only coffee shop in town. It looks like we got the place to ourselves. Except for that man at the counter. Yeah, nice Stetson. Think I should get one? I'll be right with you, folks. Oh, not at the counter, please. Is the booth all right? Anywhere you like. I wonder what specials they got. I just want something cold to drink. Well, they have ice, don't they? Knock wood. <laughs> well, look at that. Huh. 
Well, wonders never cease. Look at what? The napkin holder. Mm, what about it? It's got one of those little built-in vending machines. The Mystic Seer. Answers. Read what it says. Insert one cent. Ask me a yes or no question. You put a penny in and push the lever down. Mm, lovely. The plastic devil's head's a nice touch. I'll bet it even wobbles when the coin goes in. I'll bet it does. May I see a menu, please? The mystic seer knows all. Does he, she love me? Will I become rich? Is my future bright? I can answer those questions for free. Well, let's find out what the mystic seer says. You're like a little boy. Come on. It'll be fun. I got a penny somewhere. Here's a question. Anything exciting ever happen around here? How exciting. Like those little pieces of paper you get in fortune cookies. Things are not as they seem. Now that's interesting. Is it? Menu, darling. Oh, right. There you go. Oops. What's the matter? I knocked over the salt shaker. Well, I better throw some over my shoulder. Don, Don, really? There, that's better. Just to be on the safe side. Soup of the day, fresh garden salad. I wonder how fresh. Honey. Hmm. <laughs> you think I should phone the office in New York? Do you? Uh, I guess not. Uh, bread and chicken fried steak with country gravy. Doesn't that sound yummy? Very low cal. Howdy. Howdy. Some water for you folks, or are you made up your minds yet? I'll have a lettuce and tomato sandwich on whole wheat, iced tea with lots of ice. You, sir? I'll have the same. Coming right up. How's the water? Ugh, yuck. He must have siphoned it out of a mud hole. Not oh, that good, huh? <laughs> Hold on. What are you doing? Getting some more pennies. Look at you. A rabbit's foot, a plastic four-leaf clover. You really are superstitious, aren't you? Isn't everybody? Well, to a degree. What are you going to ask now? What else? Am I going to be promoted for Pete's sake? Ha! What does it say? It has been decided in your favor. See? Your worries are over. <laughs> I think I'll phone, though. Honey. I, I was I was going to call anyways, wasn't I? There, there's a phone by the restroom. I'll be right back. Well, you better be. Here you go. Thanks. You need any ketchup? Mm, this will be fine. Well, if you want anything, you just let me know. Thank you. started already. I hope you don't mind. Not in the least. What are you so happy about? <clears throat> you are now looking at the youngest office manager in the history of the company. <gasps> Honey! I'm so proud of you! I told you, didn't I? So did he. Who? The mystic's here. Well, I told you first. You sure did. How's this sandwich? Passable. Office manager. Oh, that's amazing. We should ask him something else. He really came through on that one. And while you're at it, ask him why he didn't warn us. About what? That the holy bread is stale. <laughs> Let's see. Does he, she love me? Don't you know? Will I become rich? Wait, I know that too. I'm going to be the first millionaire accountant in the company. Office manager, dear. All right, Mystic Seer. 
Is it really gonna be four hours before we get out of here? That's my question. You may never know. What does that mean? Who knows? He does. Look at that winking eye. Devilish creature. I gotta know more. Well, it'll cost you another penny. So, I'm an office manager now. What do you mean we may never know? Wait, wait. It's not a yes or no question. Um, you mean something could keep us from knowing? Something could happen to us? If you move soon. Now what's he getting at? He's a mystic. What do you expect? G give me another penny. I'm all out. Well, I can see I'm going to have to be the frugal one in the family. It's just one. All right. Thanks. You mean we're not, we're not supposed to move? We're supposed to stay here? Only one question per penny, please. That makes a good deal of sense. Well, I'm not staying unless I get some dessert. One more. One more. Give me another penny. You're gonna break me. Try again? Here. That's all I have. Okay, machine. Should we stay here till three o'clock then? Look at the slip. There is no question about it. Let's go for a walk. Funny. Every answer seems to fit. You're joking, aren't you? I mean, Dawn, no, no more. Okay, if we don't stay here until three o'clock, will something bad happen to us? Honey, for heaven's sake. Read it. Let, all right, let me see that. Go ahead. This is silly. I don't... What does it say? Do you dare risk finding out? That's... that's what it says. Do you realize what it means? Do you dare risk finding out? It doesn't mean anything. Can we go now? No, it's not three o'clock yet. I asked if we don't wait until three, will something bad happen? And it said... That's exactly right. It. You're talking about a machine, Dawn. We're not talking okay, about... Okay, okay, let's... Let's, let's order some ice cream. Are you stalling? No, no, of course not. But you said you wanted dessert, didn't you? Look, I think you're taking this a little too seriously. Taking what seriously? It's, it's, it's something to pass the time. Besides, it's, it's hot out there, isn't it? I suppose some ice cream would taste good. Over here. Ready for your check? Uh, not yet. Two dishes of your best ice cream, please. One vanilla, one chocolate. Yes, sir. Now. We'll sit here and enjoy a cool dessert. Then we'll both feel better. Do you agree? If that's what you really want. Hmm. That was good. Yeah, it was. Uh, now can we go? Are you sure you don't want anything else? I'm sure. Oh, some more iced tea? Don't, please. Let's go. Okay. Yes, I, I suppose we should. It's 2.45 already. Do you have enough cash? Of course. I'll go pay. Just leave it. If you don't mind, I'd like to get out of here. We've done enough setting lately. No problem. Uh, well, I guess that's it then. That's it.
The money's on the table with the check. Well, thank you kindly. Now you come on back now. Whew, still hot. Yeah. Hotter than ever. Maybe it won't take them four hours to fix the car, you think? Uh, maybe. Don. What? Tell me one thing. Yeah? You didn't really want to stay in there till three o'clock, did you? No. Honey? No. But... But what? Why was it so specific? Specific? You saw the answers. If you move soon, that makes a good deal of sense. Try again. You've memorized them? There's no question about it. You may never know. Do you dare risk? Dawn. What? It's a novelty machine. A napkin holder in a cafe in Ridgeville, Arizona. Not something... Don't you think I know that? Well, I'm glad you do. Because for a while there, you were freaking me out. What about my promotion? Then, huh? Didn't it tell me it has been decided in your favor? Dawn, listen to yourself. Oh, oh. Oh, forget it. Don't say it. Superstitious. Well? It's like you married an alcoholic, isn't it? Only instead of bottles hidden around the house, it's rabbit feet and four-leaf clovers in my pocket, in the car, all over the place. And you're all mine. I wouldn't have it any other way, honey. Truly? Have I ever lied to you? No. Let's walk over to that garage and see how the car's coming. Maybe he took some pity on us and got the fuel pump finished ahead of time. Wouldn't that be nice? You're always looking on the bright side of things, aren't you? That's me. What are you doing? I'm not, I'm not doing anything. You keep looking around as if you're expecting something to happen. Do I? You are worried, aren't you? I wouldn't say that. Oh, honey. You make me wonder when you act like this. Like how? The little things I can take, you know, the lucky charms, not walking under ladders. There's a good reason for that one, okay? Something might drop on your head, a can of paint, or... But this, it's too much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, Don. We're having such a wonderful trip, so don't spoil it with I all... said I was sorry, okay? I'm not trying, I'm not trying to upset you. Well, I know you're not. Let's just forget it. Green light. What? Time to cross the street. We're almost there. Oh. I wonder what people do here. I don't see one movie theater. You know, maybe they go to the next town. What's it called? Uh, Willimon or, uh, Klingman or... Don? Are you listening to me? What? Yeah, I heard what you said. That doesn't change the facts, though. What facts? Six straight answers telling us... To oh, not leave me. Don't. Please, let it go, okay? Will you stop treating me like a child? I didn't make those Dawn! answers. Dawn! That car! Get out of the way! Dawn, look out! Oh, my God. He didn't even pay any attention to the light. He just kept coming like we weren't even there. I don't even know. You're all right now. It's over. It's over. What time is it? What? The time. Look at the time. It's exactly three o'clock. Really, Dawn? I'm all right. No, you're not. That was quite a moment. Amen. If you hadn't pulled me out of the way, you'd have one squashed honeymooner on your hands. You should sit down. Honestly, I'm fine. We both should. Where are we going? In here. Not the diner. Just for a moment. Don. Well, why not? Well, there must be someplace else to sit down. Well, I don't see one. Do you? I know what you're thinking. All right? I admit it was a strange coincidence, but I... So? If it was a coincidence, then why, why are you worried about going back inside? I'm not. I just want to... You have to admit. It was a pretty far-fetched coincidence. Maybe. Then we'll sit for a minute. Have some more iced tea. Well, hi.
Hi, you two. Back already? Yeah. It's pretty hot out there. Yeah, sure is. I'll be right with you. Thanks. Oh, no. They're sitting in our booth, in front of our mystic seer. Yes, they are. Well, we'll just have to try another one. How about that booth? Or the next one, they have machines, too. I'm sure they, uh... Honey. What? Look at me. Do you honestly believe that gizmo over there can foretell the future? It foretold ours. How? Sit anywhere you like, folks. Thank you. Sit down, honey. Yes. All right, what'll it be? Uh, just some iced tea. Honey? I don't care. Make that too. Be right back. I asked you a question. It's a reasonable one. How? You want to know how? I don't know. But when that car almost hit us, it was three o'clock. That's exactly when the fortune... Dawn, you said three o'clock, not that machine. You decided to sit here until 2.45. You what, are the what, one... what did I do? What did I do? Oh, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. What are you so upset about? You can't even consider the possibility that... Here you go. Great. Anything else for now? No. Wait, yes. Can you bring me some more change? What kind? Uh, a quarter's worth of pennies. Make it two quarters if you can spare it. Well, I can give you a roll. That would be great. Sure, just a minute. Dawn, what are you doing? What any logical mind would do. Before we do anything else, I'm going to get the answers we need, and I'm going to get them now. Logical. How can you call this logical? Could you keep your voice down? If you can't see that you made up all the details yourself and all that that thing gave you back was generalities, then I don't know what honey, to do. Honey, would you listen to me? Will you listen? Go ahead. I have nothing more to say. I'm not going to argue with you. Sure, I filled in the details. What does that prove? Could the machine make them up? All it has inside are answer slips that are already printed. Then we agree. What are you... Let me finish. You heard me talk a hundred times about mathematical probability, right? It's my job. It's what I work with. I know that. There are probably thousands of these machines in diners all over the country. There are at least ten of them in here alone. And every one of these thousands of machines are hundreds of little answer slips arranged in some kind of order. Probably a different order for every machine, right? So? So, it's mathematically possible that the way the slips are arranged in just that one machine at this particular time might apply to our future. How can you say that? Ice tea for two. Right. And your pennies. You know, too bad that thing's not a slot machine. <laughs> Isn't it, though? All right, you need anything else, just wave. I'm here all day. Got it. I'd appreciate it, honey, if you wouldn't act as if I were losing my mind. Well, aren't you? Is that what you think? Let me try to explain. You don't have to explain anything. But I do. Try to follow what I'm saying. There is a higher realm of mathematics that goes beyond probabilities. Some of it comes from quantum physics. Why are you telling me this? Hear me out, please. Young, the psychologist, talked about synchronicity, meaningful coincidence. The point being that there are no pure coincidences. Everything is interconnected. If we can just spot the connections, it's what the Chinese I Ching is based on. The one where you throw three coins and look up your fortune in a book. Dawn, please. It's not fortune telling. It only seems to be. The idea is there are 64 hexagrams. Each one represents a pattern that 
that reflects our place in the world at a given moment. Find the right one and all else follows. It couldn't happen any other way. But the coins could come up in any combination. No, that's just it. Given everything else, at a particular point in time, there is only one pattern that fits. The Qing is just a means of identifying that pattern. So, you do believe in fortune telling? You're not listening. I said... How can you let yourself be controlled by such a thing? Can't you see what you're doing to yourself? What am I doing? What about the questions you asked? Were they mathematically determined too? I don't know. All I know is that the answers matched them. They would have matched any questions you asked. Does he love me? You may never know. Will I become rich? If you move soon. Is my future bright? There is no question about it. Ask anything, okay? It will always seem to fit. Honey, that's not the point. What is the point? We're about to find out. They're leaving. We can have our old booth back. Oh, Don. Bring your glass. Now we can test the hypothesis. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. First question. Did you know about that car almost hitting us? What do you think? Oh, that's conclusive. Will we reach New York City all right now? The chances are good. You see that? Hmm, very precise. W what do you expect? Okay, a slip of paper should come out that says, Hi, you Dauncey and Patsy. So how's by you? I never said these slips were made for us personally. I only said... I heard. Honey, don't you see that you could get the same kind of answers from any one of those machines in here? Try. You'll see. The same kind, maybe, but not the same answers. So you're not interested in being objective? I'm... I'm interested in what's gonna happen to us. Okay, machine. Is it still going to take four hours to fix the car? It has already been taken care of. Swell, that's it then, let's go. Wait, wait! Maybe, maybe it doesn't mean- Mean what? Mr. Carter? Yes. Oh, hi. From the garage. I thought you'd like to know if your car's ready. Is it? Had a lucky break. Found a fuel pump right here in town. Last one they had, too. That's... That's good news. We'll be right over. Okie dokie. Shall we? You think that was a coincidence? Yes. Why don't you ask it some questions, then? Or are you afraid to? All right, if that's what it takes. Okay, go ahead. Here's a penny. Will we reach El Paso by tomorrow? We're not going through. Quiet. You're trying to trick it. If that's what you really want. See? It can't be tricked. Will I ever get married? Read it. The answer to that is obvious. Mystic Seer. It isn't possible to foresee the future, is it? What does it say? That's up to you to find out. You're a stupid piece of junk, aren't you? It all depends on your point of view. I don't want to stay here. Even if it's true? Sit down. Especially if it's true! What are you talking about? I've had enough! We're not finished with the test. Maybe you're not, but I am. I think you are afraid of it. Not of it, Don. Of what then? Don't you know? Can't you see it on my face? Fine, then I'll finish it for you. Okay, machine. Are we always going to live in New York? Are we always going to live in Los Angeles, then? Well, then are we going to live in the Midwest? Then are we going to live in this country? Dawn. Dawn! No more. What? Let's 
go. No! Put those down. Are we just going to stay here? I don't know! Sweetheart, listen. Please, if you love me, listen to me. No, you listen to me! I believe that this machine can tell what's going to happen to us. I believe it, Pat. Based on empirical evidence. Do you think I'm just gonna leave it behind? We can't afford to do that. There's too much at stake, but you won't even admit it's possible! All right, it's possible! Is that what you want to hear? I'm not talking about that anymore. I'm talking about you! Us, Pat! Us! I know, but are you just gonna sit here and let this machine run your life? Run my life? Well, isn't that what you're letting it do? Don, it made you phone the office before. It made you stay here instead of leave. It made you afraid to walk down the street. Now it's telling you where you're going to live. That's not true. Honey! It's as if, as if every superstitious feeling that you've ever had is all wrapped up in this one machine. It isn't just a matter of whether it can foretell the future. It's a matter of whether you believe more in these predictions than you do in yourself. Honey, you can decide your own life. You have a good mind, a fine mind. Don't waste it trying to justify a penny fortune machine to yourself, okay? We have such a wonderful life ahead of us, but only if we depend on ourselves to make it wonderful. Not if we, you know? Oh, Pat. Shh, come on. I don't want to be told what's going to happen to us. I want us to make it happen. Together. All right, baby. Don't cry. Something wrong, folks? No, no. We're okay. It's all right, baby. We'll go now. We'll go. I'm a jerk. You're not. You're wonderful. Sure I am. Come on. Mm. I'm the world's biggest jerk. <laughs> You want my handkerchief? Come on. We'll go get the car, all right? Don't do it just for me, Don. Honey, that's the best reason I have right now. Just... Just give me time, huh? I'll shape up. I love you so much. I love you, too. There it is. No one's using it. Thank God. Sit anywhere you like, folks. Wow. Well, it's you two. Can we sit here, please? As soon as I clean up. We don't care. Has to be this one. All right, suit yourself. Just water again? It doesn't matter. Do you have any more pennies? I think so, yes. Then go ahead. Can we ask some more questions now? What does it say? Choice is yours. Do you think we might leave Ridgeville today? Let me see. <laughs> oh. Well, where are we going to get some money to live on? Should I... Sh should I sell our car? What? Then? A delicate balance in the little town of Ridgeville, Arizona. Two people who have escaped from the tyranny of fear and superstition two others permanently enslaved by it. One couple able to face the future with confidence, another couple facing it with hopeless dread, victims of life imprisonment in the darker regions of the Twilight Zone.
Nick of Time, starring Marshall Allman and Jamie Brown with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Richard Matheson. Heard in the cast were Paul Cook, Craig Brawley, Amber Lake, Jeff Lupitan, Kate Johnson, Doug James, and Elizabeth Lido. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. 